Welcome to the Old Souls and Seekers podcast brought to you by Satori Prime. If you're anything like us, you've been around and around the personal development and mindset block quite a few times. You've read the books, watched the videos, attended the seminars, and even worked with a coach or two, and yet you still find yourself searching for more. You may even feel stuck or that you should be farther along than where you are right now. And after doing over a decade of mindset work, we've come to this realization. Mindset work is like a small hit of dopamine that distracts you from your true work. You get these little hits of feeling better only to be met with the same underlying conditions and patterns over and over again. Now, mindset was an important part of your evolution as well as ours, but it hits a plateau and now you find yourself ready for that deeper layer of growth and expansion. If you're listening to this podcast, then you're ready to get off that Ferris wheel. This podcast is only for those that are ready to dive deep and do the real inner healing work. For those that are ready to move past more information into actual experiences. If you're looking for more understanding, then you've come to the wrong place. This is a home for old souls ready to fully embrace and remember who they truly are. Ready to make a profound difference in their lives and in the lives of others. So welcome home, dear one. We're excited to be part of your journey. Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Adrian already was well aware that we were in the jungle. Um, yeah, we had, uh, we had quite an incredible experience. I just want to say for anyone that's here with us, um, later on in the episode, Guy and I were just, uh, brainstorming and we just keep downloading things some of them kind of came and started in the jungle, but we haven't really even had time to kind of like, um, brainstorm them while we've been back and so we just literally finished like five minutes before we got on here um and we have some incredible news for uh for people who are been sitting on the periphery like if you're if you're kind of sitting on the sidelines and haven't taken a plunge into one of our programs stick around we have some uh an incredible incredible opportunity uh that we're going to share a little bit later on today so incredible, in fact, that we were like, do we actually do this? Um, but we're going to. So in any event, um, <laughs> Guy has this uh, playlist and we <laughs> usually play it when we get to the jungle. Those that have been with us, I see Andrea and Alex here, uh, will know that that uh, playlist well. And um, that song that has now in my head forever been the Satori Prime song is on that playlist. So every time it went on in the jungle and we're like in the jungle, I was like, oh, Satori Prime. <laughs> um, As you do. Yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah, we're, we're – I'm going to say we're physically back. I, I can't – I can't say that I have fully landed – back uh for those that don't have any idea what that means it's like you know we go to the jungle um we take clients and um we basically do four ayahuasca ceremonies in a span of a week in a place that is so so magical um and so beautiful that people basically call it the garden of eden and on top of the fact that the place is beautiful uh, the women who lead the ceremonies, the shamanistas, uh, a mother a mother and her two daughters are just the most beautiful beings. Uh, one of them is probably, yeah, I'm going to say it, like the, the most incredible healer that I've ever had the privilege of being around and watching work. She's just, she's kind of what I imagine like, the witches were that got burned at stakes way back in. And like, I can absolutely see how someone like that would scare the fuck out of people. Cause they're just, their abilities are beyond what we would think is normal for human. And when you see it, like it, it would probably be the only response that you have is like, this person is a witch and can do some weird things, even though like 
she obviously does it with from a place of just healing and liberating things inside your body and in the most beautiful ways she has a vision and a sight that is beyond anyone that i've ever seen so you know that um how nourished it is like you know the the land is nourishing the food that they serve you is nourishing the way that they take care of you is is beyond uh anything um, so you just feel like you get blasted with love and resource and nourishment and all this stuff that when you're there and then when you like leave that place and that connection and that resource it it honestly feel it's like it's like heartbreak it's like leaving a lover uh it's it's really painful being separated from your mother yeah it's like really really painful every time we leave guy and i literally do like the slowest walk <laughs> out of the garden and like touch every tree and branch and blade of grass. And we're like kissing rocks. And, you know, I I'm sure his, his ritual is similar to mine where it's just like so much gratitude and thanks for literally every speck on those grounds for taking care of us, teaching us, taking care of the beautiful people that we bring there and share this work with. And, uh, there's just so much gratitude. And then there's this always, we leave with this feeling of like, I always say like, I'll see you soon. You know, mm. like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I might be gone for a year, but I will 100% be back because it's just such a special, special experience. And so, yeah, like coming back, you know, just don't feel fully here. Like don't feel fully landed. Uh, my heart still feels there. My head is still like a little bit swimmy from, all of the experience. It's like drinking from a fire hose for a week straight. And mm -hmm. um, the experiences are just so rich and beautiful. Um, so yeah, it's uh, the thing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's incredible opportunity. Um, those that, yeah, Alex is saying, I remember being so sad for weeks after leaving that place and all of you. Yeah. And that's, you know, what Alex is pointing to. It's like, you're there with, 11 other people uh, that become soul family, you know, and the experiences that you go through and, and what you watch each other go through and how you support each other going through those things is so beyond human that when you leave, there's this emptiness. It's like, like th this family that has just been around you for a week uh, all of a sudden is gone. And, you know, as amazing as it was for guy and I to come home and hug our wives and kids and like sleep in your bed, and all that is amazing. It's still like there's a longing and a missing, and um, so it's a coming back. It's a coming back home experience. It's a it's a connection with nature, with your with your multi dimensional and soul self in such a way that most of us have never actually tasted before. So it's like when you finally like step foot in your house again, you know, on the spiritual level, yeah. it's uh, the way that it resources your your body, your mind, your soul, your emotional state, every level. How you can connect to yourself and others is such a it's so eye opening and you you can also feel how disconnected we're living today and how like un unnatural that is like when I when I would think think to coming home and like sitting in like an urban box you know like a colorless <laughs> urban box like there's just parts of my system that like just crave that connection so deeply as I'm sure you know whether conscious or unconscious for everybody is is kind of there because that is that's that that's the natural way for us to be so in in intimate with nature so intimate um with our lives and of course today it's a it's a world filled with distraction so yeah you know much of what we do here uh as practices and satori prime and what our programs are about are are to connect to those parts to to those lineages um to that energy in whatever way you can throughout your entire day whether it's learning how to ground your system or authentically connect to other people or work through trauma as it's moving and exiting the body right like so many of the lessons that we we have taken from the jungle and for those of you guys that that you know don't have um experience with psychedelics or certainly ayahuasca which is a, a whole other plane of, of of existence um it kind of like peeks you behind the curtain of reality um that kind of it does peek you behind the, the curtain of reality and you've never had those experiences it's a way to to shift the way that like our mind operates it's how we see what we perceive what we can imagine uh in so many ways and so i just realized while we were down there that for me it's been it's been a decade now of working with uh with plants um in that way um i've i've sat in, a, in about a hundred of those ritualistic 
ceremonies, which are just so beautiful and resourcing and honestly, some of the most challenging work I've ever done, if not the most challenging work I've ever done in my life simultaneously. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we are always looking to extract from these lineages, from these very, very long, I mean, thousands of year long traditions of looking at what practices and what are the messages that the plants send um, and beam into our consciousness and how that helps us connect to the ethereal all. And we do whatever we can to bring those lessons into the group work and coaching that we do here so that you guys, even if you can't travel to the jungle or drink plant medicine or that confronts you very much, that you can still be um, intertwined in that work and intertwined in the connection of a community that's intertwined with that work. So you're still receiving the benefits, you know, but that the reality, as I can see it from having done many of these experiences is that, that humanity is really no different at all than the plant world. Everything is tied underneath the surface in the ground, very intimately to one another and, and how an individual feels or acts greatly, greatly impacts the whole. And so that gives us always a bit of a pause and some solace and even gratitude that our interpersonal healing and what we experience individually is really having a tremendous impact on the transformation of the entire species. That's good. No one is separated, right? Everyone is the drop in the ocean and the entire ocean simultaneously. And th these experiences add a lot of clarity, not just from a, a mindset place where, oh, we think about, oh, we're all one. You can, you can viscerally feel and experience that and it makes it um undeniable that feeling of oneness and i'm sure you've heard many people you know with psychedelic experiences you, including with mushrooms and other experiences that people describe that feeling so it's very um very beautiful you know very beautiful very very challenging very beautiful <laughs> everything in between and and i just want to add that like <clears throat> over the last two times that we've went um something has become very very apparent and for those that are new to this work, uh, I see uh, Roberta and Michiko. Um, I think those are the ones that I saw that were new. You know, this work that we do here, um, our academy, which we call the Awareness Effect Academy, um, the reason, like what we noticed when we started to take the last two groups down is plant medicine is really, really genius at, at something. And that something is bringing you to places in your life uh, where surrender is the only way, right? Like you're, you're being faced with things that have been buried. And I mean, like, I don't even mean the basement. Like, like if your basement had seven other basements, like things yeah. from there, right? That you have never faced, never seen, never felt because you have no access to it from human, like you just don't. And when that arises, right, it, it, you're really left with one choice, suffer or surrender. That's just kind of how medicine works. And eventually you kind of get one way or another, you, you get to this place of surrender. And some people fight all the way through to the point where you're like, I can't fucking fight anymore. And like you give up in that exhale of like, uh, right. But during that time, there's, there's parts that fight and they fight because they're scared. Uh, they fight because they're uncertain, right? Like there's the unknown of, is this thing going to kill me? Is it not going to kill me? Is it, you know, whatever it might be. And the beauty is that we actually do this work with clients in our higher level programs. So like our level two and level three programs, this is actually the work that we're doing with people. So that as life is coming at you and life, I can imagine for most of you, is coming at you. What we practice is can we develop skills and tools that allows us to find ground, that allows us to find safety, that allows us to find connection, that allows us to find peace, well-being in the midst of the chaos that is life. You know, for some of you, the chaos might be uh, career based or financial based. For others of you, it can be in health, wellness, right? And that could be like a physical health wellness. It could be a mental health wellness. Um, it could be in relationships, right? Intimate relationships, relationships at work, relationships with your kids, with your parents, whatever it might be like. 
all of you have some area of life that is chaotic at this moment. Would you say yes? Like, just let me know if, cause maybe I'm totally off base, but like, is there at least some place in your life that you're experiencing more chaos, more instability, more unknown, right? And if it's that, if that's you, then what, what I noticed like over with these last two groups is that these tools that we share with people and train people on how to cultivate ongoingly in their lives have made plant medicine incredibly powerful and effective because instead of sitting in that place of fighting it, resisting it, arguing with it, trying to get out of it, whatever it is, like the clients that we brought down there have such capacity to be in their body with what is arising that there's no fight. There's no resistance. There's just an allowing. And the more you allow the teacher and the spirit of ayahuasca is unlike anything else. Truly, like we had uh, a couple of people down there that are healers and teachers in their own right, similar to ours, that have done work for over 20 years. And this was the first time they had done medicine. And both of them were like, holy shit, like I didn't even know that this level of healing is available on this plane. Like the, it wasn't even plausible. And they have done so much work and it was just, it blew them away. Like it, it, it shattered every concept of what they thought this was going to be. So whether you end up joining us or not, and I think someone, uh, Simona, I think before had, had reached out about how to do that. We offer this once a year uh, as, as a add-on. We only have 10 spots, literally, to fill. That's the only amount of people that we can bring there. That's the max. Uh, and typically what we do is we offer it to our level three clients. If they don't fill it, then we go to our level two clients. If they don't fill it, you know, so on and so forth. Typically, it gets filled up just with our level three clients. Uh, this past time was a little bit of a strange thing. So we had some some openings that we don't usually have. But what I can tell you is like, if you join level three, this almost becomes like the celebration that you get to attend because it really makes you realize like, wow, all this amazing work that I've done, now I can take and implement and have this medicine work and teach me. And it just, it I mean, it, like it skyrockets your your ability. Um, yeah. And Alex says like she did it before and really suffered. And, you know, Alex uh, went through some really, really intense experiences in the jungle with us, like super, super intense. And for those of you guys that haven't read, and I think she posted it in the big group, she wrote the most beautiful post um, about the year after doing the medicine and how it's impacted her life and her relationship with her mom and like all these incredible things. And you know, like the integration of what we uncover in the jungle can take upwards of a year. Mm -hmm. And so you go there and you have all these intentions and all these things start to happen and it all happens like really intense and really fast. And then you go back into your life. And so the integration of the work is what's so important. And that's why to me, it's like, even if you don't come to the jungle, and what you do is you actually do this awareness effect work. Like you do these practices. I'm telling you right now, like you're going to get as close as a human can get to levels of healing that are only possible with medicine through this pathway. And you cannot even touch it through mindset. You can't touch it through watching videos like this or YouTube videos or at home courses like you app, you just can't. And if you think that you're like, I, there's this guy that I watch who does this. Um, he's like a personal trainer, but in this very like, um, I don't know, he trains people on how to do like all these incredible things with their body, like really flexible, really strong, etc. And what I love is literally every video that he makes he yells at the top of his lungs about how, if what you're going to do is watch a bunch of these videos, stop. He's like, it's not going to work. You can watch these until you for the next 17 lifetimes, you can watch these and like, it's not going to shift. 
Because what you need in order to do that practice is like you need to sit with a practitioner who can see how you're holding the body and make these little adjustments for you so that you can actually move through these levels. And he's like, you can't do that on your own. And I'm going to tell you the same thing that he says, like, you can't do this work on your own. You can do parts of this work on your own, but you can't do this work on your own. And if you're someone that's like legit looking for healing in their life and you've been sitting on the sidelines and doing this kind of like, you know, watch a video here, sign up for a digital program there, you know, read a book there. Like, I'm not saying that that stuff doesn't work. Like, it's okay. But healing happens in community. Healing happens in connection with another. You can't heal wounds and ruptures that happen with mom and dad and in relationships that happen with another by yourself. Like you need other, you need that template. You need the retemplating of it. And that's where I think so many of us get stuck is, you know, we're fiercely independent. We think that we're going to have to do all this stuff. And like, you know, we'll come out there when we figured it all out and like, you're, you're just doing yourself a disservice, but you know, you, one way or another, whether you take my word for it or you go and figure it out for the next 10 years on your own, like you're going to come to the same conclusion. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I can just save you 10 years and God knows how many thousands of dollars. I was just thinking at the jungle, like guy and I was invested over a million dollars, different coaches, different experiences. And I started making this list in my head of like the things that we've done. And I'm sure that I forgot a good 30, 40% of it. The list was long, <laughs> really long, yeah. like really, really long. And I just thought to myself, I was like, why? Like, why wouldn't someone get value from, from someone like Guy and I who have invested over 21 years of, of day in, day out training, a million dollars and all these experiences and I'm a very practical guy. I can tell you with hand on heart, like there's lots of things that I learned that didn't really make a difference. I paid a lot of money for them, but they didn't really make a difference. And there's a few things like less than a handful of things that I do day in and day out that have made the most profound impact on my life. So yes, go out and spend the next 20 years, go out and spend, you know, a million dollars and go learn those lessons or come here, get the shortcuts and actually start doing the things that make the biggest difference so that you don't have to do all those things. Yeah. Yes, to Roberta, but I want to reiterate it to everybody here. You know, Roberta's saying, like, I have so much trauma. It's forcing me to deal with it. And I've been doing it all on my own so far because the supports aren't there. And we agree. I mean, like, you know, we live in a highly traumatized world. We live in a highly charged world. You know, if global events haven't made you sick to your stomach yet. Mm. There's a lot of that. And I'm not crying because I have a side. I'm crying because it's painful to watch humanity do this to, to humanity. Over and, and over I, and over again. And I'm born in that country. So trust me, there's a side, <laughs> you know, and I feel very deeply and it's just. It's very hard to watch. It's very hard to know that that's happening on the planet. It's very hard to know that families are impacted and children are impacted. And we got to know that this is, this stuff is not new. And we've been doing this to each other for a really, really long time. And it doesn't go away until we learn how to be compassionate with ourselves. That's the reality. I don't care what you think is going to force all this to, to come to a close or that for this world to be a peaceful and beautiful in which it is intended to be, which we are intended to be. I have yet to meet a person in my life who cannot exude internal compassion that it can exude external compassion. It, it's not possible. You cannot give to this world what you have not given to yourself. Mm. And I, like you, I'm a very traumatized child. 
not just from this lifetime, lots of really fucked up lifetimes that through this work and through medicine work and stuff like that, I've gotten horrific glimpses of, of what has been done to us, what has been done to you, what has been done to me. And so it is imperative. It is imperative for the individual to give a shit enough about this world and about themselves to face themselves in those places. You know, what Roberta is saying, traumatized, heavily traumatized system. Can't run from it. You can hide it for a long time. Take drugs, drink alcohol. You can watch a lot of TV. You can put ultra processed food inside of your body and make yourself feel terrible. And you can try to point your awareness everywhere except for where the symptom is because the symptom usually doesn't feel really fucking good to look at it. But again, we've been doing this for 21 years. For me, I, I can't even tell you how many lifetimes I have been on this path. And I have yet to meet any healing experience in my life without commitment and dedication and incredible courage to go into those dark recesses within myself and learn how to sit with them with compassion and love and relax and let that move through my system. I've just never seen it done any other way. I wish you can flick a button. I wish you could snap your fingers. I wish you could change a thought and have it be, it doesn't work. <clears throat> They're all parts of that puzzle because if you can't change your thought, you're never going to look at those things anyway. You're just going to keep doing what you're doing. You need something to shake you out of your slumber. We, are, we seem to be a species that likes to procrastinate. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, and I imagine from a spiritual perspective, because the human animal perspective is very painful to watch, but from a spiritual perspective, in terms of what I believe is happening on our planet, in terms of the enlightenment that is inevitable here, for some people, for some systems, they are so wildly dependent on this matrix as it is. So desperately giving their power away. that the only way to have them look is to shock their systems. I would like to be, unfortunately, fortunately, unfortunately, and I would like to live in a world as I'm sure you do, where that scale of shock is no longer needed for the populace to really realize what is important. There are three things that a human being must have, must have that's shelter. It's food. And it's connection, healthy connection, like authentic, healthy connection. Everything else is a luxury, everything else. And we understand when we sit here and we talk about the things that we talk about, we're asking you to do something and you come to us and ask us. And when we ask and we tell you, here's, this, here's what it looks like to have a solution. It, it's an uncomfortable one. We are, we are asking you to face the darkness that lives within all of us, that lives within yourself. We're asking you to peer down a corridor of the unknown and still sit with the fact that that's really fucking uncomfortable. And then here is how you can sit with that so that this can move through you and that there's spacious, and so spaciousness opens up and that your system can shift its energy and its focus and truly transform itself because that's, that is what's required again i wish it was some other way and maybe in the future it, it will be some other way but most of us have spent a lifetime avoiding what we intuitively know is true or we're unconsciously agreeing to all this shit. like i truly i mean again this is a pretty high level way of looking at things so i understand if you don't agree with me and that's okay but everything that happens on this planet, everything that happens to our species, we unconsciously agree to everything, everything you allow other people to do to you, everything you allow yourself to do to yourself. There is an unconscious agreement. Now, unconscious is unconscious. You're not in control of it. It's just kind of how the system works and kind of how reality works. So, you know, just going back to full circle on the jungle, it's like drinking a psychedelic like that that's extremely potent and has you really confront shit 
is an act of courage. Every time people drink that stuff, it's an act of courage. Every yeah. single time. Your healing is an act of courage. That's a, that's a, re a requirement. And so, like, if you take any of our programs on, it's an act of courage. That's the reality. And so you got to know when you're facing that choice, stuff is going to come up. All the stuff that wants to keep status quo. All the stuff that does not, you know, as much as you think mentally, I want things to change. Those parts are not aligned to that. They are aligned to unconsciously keeping the status quo. They are comfortable in the band in which they work with, even if that comfort, even if that band is very traumatic, very traumatic for your human. It really, really takes something to say, I want to make a change and I need support to do that. And to Elon's point, can you make a change without support? You can, but minimal. Because change happens and is rooted in the state of mastery. You got to master something. Like we can all pick up the guitar and play a few chords, right? Here's a D, here's a G, here's an E. Does that mean you're playing that chord well or does it sound good for anybody? It's completely out of it. It's, it's out of attunement. It takes a long time with a teacher to sit there and teach you the nuance of playing that instrument and to make those chords sound beautiful and in attunement. The human system is identical. Identical, right? And so like we've sat with teachers to learn how to tune our systems. What does it take to play myself a chord in accord with my life's purpose, with my soul's purpose? And for the most part, we have a world not living in purpose or on purpose. You know, we have a world that's feeling really disconnected. Yeah, and uh, I don't know what the first name is here, but H. Dortland saying, I don't like the word traumatized. It's disempowering and inaccurate. I believe we are resilient by nature, but due to lack of awareness and direction, people feel lost. We can choose love in every decision we make. Absolutely, I, I agree. You know, we can, we can always talk about the nuance of meaning of words and, and the meaning matters, right? But today, you know, common nomenclature is the system is traumatized. And to be, to be honest, you know, again, I don't know who, what the first name is there. Like I've met my system in a state of trauma. And to me, that's it simply means it's, it's some kind of a fight, flight or a freeze response in the system. It means that something happened that shocked the system and now the system is stuck in that shock. Right. <clears throat> and, it, and it is really, truly uncomfortable to meet yourself there. Having said that, there are technologies that have existed on this planet. I have been one of them, but certainly there's many other ones outside of the plant medicine world that are proven to work. And like Elon said, we had to investigate for 20 years to find just a handful of those practices that when we do them day in and day out and we share those things with other clients and we teach them how to do them, that we see systematically it works for everybody and works across the board. Now, I just want to say this healing like anything in mastery is not an overnight, it's not an overnight sensation. I've never seen anybody actually heal their life in two days. You know, 20 years of work and tens of thousands of people. Healing to me is more of an art than a science. And it requires diligence, commitment, and patience on your part. And those last three, most people don't have those things in spades. <laughs> they're, <laughs> not diligent, they're not committed, and they certainly don't have patience. They want, it to, they want to be transformed the moment they plunk their money down. And it's like, okay, is it realistic for a human being who's 40, 42, I'm, I'm 40 right now, years old, who's operated one way hundreds of thousands of times to suddenly shift everything in a moment without doing a lot of repetitions to build some sort of a new habit? Maybe. I've not seen it, though, personally, you know, with all the people that we've gone to work with, with all the classes I've been with. You know, people who, who make headway in their transformation are deeply committed to their inner work, deeply committed. As much as you would need to be committed to any other area of life to truly master it. If you're not committed to your spouse or partner and having a good relationship there, how does that go? It tumbles, it falls, like, you know, because you bring all your shit and all your, right, disempowerment and traumatization into that environment and the other person's bound to spark it and you're bound to deal with yourself in that space. And if you don't go and get an outside perspective on how to maybe show up in your relationship in a new way, your relationship is going to take some big fucking hits. And tell me I'm wrong when we have a 50 or 60 percent divorce rate. One out of two people can't stay in a relationship. The other one and the rest of them, for the most part, are probably suffering in those relationships in some way. Right. So. 
it's incumbent on, on all of us to look out in the world and say, holy fuck, that is really, really out of alignment. Like what is happening in the world over the last, you know, five, six, seven and years. And then I'd tack on a few more thousands before that, you know, have been really, really out of alignment for humanity. And it, it is pushing us. It is forcing us to have to face ourselves in these places and to meet ourselves in a, in a new way and let that be renewed truly. So, you know, you got to look for yourself. It's like, you know, I, yeah, I, you might have your, your pain inside. I get that. We're all, we're all traveling around with our suitcases full of pain in some way, shape or form, you know, and I understand we all come from different traditions and religions and look at things in at a lot of different ways. But as far as my investigations have showed me, this consciousness that's sitting behind this head somewhere or around me, right? That's really, it's, a, it's called, it's local, non-local phenomenon awareness. Doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't die and is always aware. Mm -hmm. This is the, this is the meat suit I get this time around to do the best I can to clean stuff, to clean stuff up. And so like the game I'm playing, and I think the patience we can all to some degree play with is that we really have forever. <laughs> like we really have infinity to work on this stuff. But what I, what I want to see, and I imagine you do too, is a world that suffers a lot less or has no mm -hmm. suffering at all or a world that doesn't have suffering at all. So I can wait on my laurels and say, all right, no, we can, we can do this next time around. But I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm done with that shit. You know, what I do in this lifetime, I really do think greatly impacts the whole and greatly impacts the life that I get to have next, the body that I get to enter next. And either that body's going to carry this trauma that this consciousness carries around with it, or I'm going to clean that stuff up and, and just ultimately have a life that's more filled with more and ease. And I, <laughs> and I, and I do absolutely believe the transformation on our planet is an inevitability and is coming for all of us. The question you got to ask yourself as the next X amount of years get fucking crazy which we're seeing that there has not been a slowdown and crazy for a minute for like how many years now we're all like waiting to, for things to get back to normal. It's not going to happen. We're done with that stuff. We are in a rebirthing process. Rebirthing is the birthing is super intense. It's scary. It's emotional. It's elated. It's exciting. It's terrifying. It's everything together. That that's the status of the world right now. That's the status of our, of us and our consciousness right now. And so like, how are you going to contribute to that? through your own experience. Even if you never help another individual on this planet, which is fine. I think most people do want to serve in some way that just kind of seem to be part of the course. But even if it's just to serve yourself, just to serve yourself compassionately, to meet yourself in a loving place, truly that would be enough. That would be a systemic change on our planet. You know, so hopefully when we make, you know, we extend invitations, you guys can feel and hear where I'm speaking from and the determination that we have to support people and finding these pathways for yourself and also having an understanding that this is not a one size fits all fix. And it really does require, again, your diligence, your commitment and your patience with yourself because you are going to fuck this up royally <laughs> and 10 ways from Sunday. But little by little, you're going to you're going to centralize yourself and get very grounded on how to walk this spiritual path that we're all on for our personal and communal healing. I hope that's that had tone for a lot of you guys. Um, um, I just want to uh, H. Dortland said he doesn't like the word uh, traumatized. Yeah, that's what I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I just, I, I, it's interesting how certain words trigger certain responses in us. Um, and I, I think I just want to offer that, like something that became very apparent to me is, and again, like at the end of the day, words guys are nothing more than distinctions right? It, it's, it's someone creating some sort of map through distinctions using certain words. Um, so for me, like when I learned, and, and I think it was um, Roy was saying that, you know, he is less, you know, doesn't have as much trauma. And so for Guy and I, it was kind of a very similar situation. 
Uh, we were born to a family and to parents that loved each other. We, we experienced a lot of love uh, throughout. And uh, to this day, you know, happily married and, and very much in love. And so we grew up in a household that had respect and love for everyone, you know, for, for us as kids, um, for them in the relationship. And we would do these practices and programs and people would always be like, you know, how did mom or dad, uh, like, what did they do to traumatize you, this and that? And we're like, they didn't really do anything. We kind of had like an idyllic life. We weren't abused, not mentally, physically, emotionally, et cetera. So all these things were like, didn't make sense. Didn't make sense. Didn't make sense. Someone gave me um, a map that kind of shifted things for me. And they broke trauma into big T trauma and then little T trauma. And I'd never heard that before. So I, I would like to share with you guys because big T trauma is kind of what everyone talks about. And trauma, just so you understand, is simply an event in one's life that something happened that created a, a reaction of some sort. And the reaction could have led to sadness, embarrassment, uh, fear, whatever it might be. Okay. That's all that means, right? If there's like a trauma is like impact, like something got hit and then had a reaction. So big T trauma is what most people talk about. Uh, physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, uh, abandonment, things of that nature, right? Sadly, many, many, many people on this planet have some serious big T trauma. Guy and I lived more in the world of little t trauma and little t trauma happens all the time. Little t trauma simply means that there was a misattunement between you and the person that you were in an interaction with. So for example, if I was really sad, right? Like I came and I was crying, but my guardian at that time, they had not healed or dealt with sadness. So for them, sadness was not okay. And even in the best, with the best of intentions, if that guardian did not allow you to be witnessed while being sad, but instead try to give you a piece of candy or distract you or tell you that there's no need to be sad, everything's okay, you know, and like try to logic you out of sadness, that creates a little T trauma. Can you guys feel that like misattunement, right? Like the child is having an experience and that experience isn't validated. That creates impact. And so when we talk about trauma, I really want to name that like it doesn't have to be these big things. For Guy and I, it took well over 15 plus years to finally understand that, yes, our parents were amazing. However, like our father, for example, didn't have emotional attunement, right? Like he wasn't able to be with sad. He wasn't able to be with certain emotions because he, at that time in his life, had not tapped into his emotional body. And so when the little one isn't met in the way that they need to be met, that creates a reaction in the body because it really wants to be held, right? It really wants to be met in the sad, in the fear, in the whatever. It doesn't need the explanation. The little one doesn't need to be, uh, you know, told that there's no monsters under the bed or, you know, uh, guns on TV aren't real. Like it, the little one just needs to have an experience and be held in sad or fear or whatever it might be. And if you've been around kids long enough, you, you know that like kids have this amazing ability to peak. It's like the, the, the wave peaks of their emotional state. And then if it's met, it just dissipates. The kid doesn't need the explanation out of it. It just needs to know that like it can have the full breadth of the human experience. And truth is that unless your parents did a lot of this work, which most people have not, right? Like, they, they let you down. They weren't there in the ways that you needed to be met. 
And that's not to say that they were bad parents. It's just like they didn't have the tools. They didn't know how. So they did the best that they can with the information that they had at hand, every single one of them, just like every single one of us. And when you alter the, the information, when you alter the experience, when you allow yourself to have these new openings, and it only starts with you, like you can't give to somebody else what you don't have. So guess what you have to get adept at? Can you be with your sadness? Can you be with your little one that's scared? Can you be with your little one that uh, gets sad or nervous or feels abandoned or alone? Like you first have to be able to give that to yourself. And the reason why I say like, you can't do that in the video and you can't do that by reading a book and you can't do that by listening to these two guys talk on a Tuesday is because what you're missing is the template for that holding. How can you give yourself something that was never given to you? Like you don't even know what that feels like. If you can't create safety in your own system, what are you shooting for? You read the word peace. Okay, I want to be more peaceful. What is that? Do you even know what peaceful feels in body? No, you don't because you've never had that experience. Right? Like you first need an anchor point of something. And this is again, like what ayahuasca is incredible at is like, it gives you these experiences where you, as a felt sense, you're like, whoa, that's what receiving love feels like. That's what a system at ease and, and restfulness feels like. You can read a million books that point to peace, but until it's felt in your body, your body doesn't know where to go. Your body can't create the experience through you reading words. It's like two different languages. And this is why people get stuck in the world of acquiring more information because they're you're like your mind convinces you that, oh, you know what? Like I'm so close. If I just take a deep dive into the teachings of peace by Buddha, like I'm going to get there. No, you're not. And take it from someone that's tried a lot. Like you just can't, but you go sit with someone who has developed that level of peace or ground or stability or well-being in their system and your system drinks it in whether you're doing it or not, just by the virtue of you being there, you're like, oh, because we learn through transmission. We learn through osmosis. It's the way we learned as kids. And it's the way we will always learn. And so if you're not putting yourself in those environments, this is what I'm saying. Like, you can't learn it. You can get the theoretical aspect of it. But you just can't learn it. You guys get that? Does this, is this landing? This is really important. Like this, this single conversation can save you decades of wasted time because the mind likes the path that you're on. It is predictable. You're going to have little squirts of like, oh my God, I feel so smart now. But like, you're still going to have the same responses, the same reactions in the body because until that trauma is healed and felt fully through, it will run the show for as long as you live. And you're just going to throw more information at it, but it's still going to run the show because until you sit with practitioners, that that's your template. That's the only thing you got to work with. And our teacher always says like, the finger pointing at the moon is not the moon. There's only a handful of people, maybe, depending on whether you believe we landed on the moon or not, that uh, actually like experienced moon, you know, and they can tell you all about it. But like, until you were there, jumping around in less gravity and like experiencing that whole thing, like, none of us have a fucking clue about moon. So to me, it's like, where are you shortchanging yourself? And where are you robbing yourself of getting on the court? and actually having an as lived experience versus an as read story. Do you guys feel like the difference between that? It's, it's massive, massive. You know, it's, it's interesting, like my daughter really likes baking 
and you know, there's bajillions of videos, right? Like bake this, bake that, bake this, bake that. I don't know how many of you guys have done this, but like, if you try to cook something new or bake something new or whatever it is, like obviously depending on your level of uh, expertise in the kitchen, you know, you're going to produce different results, but it's like, it's amazing. Like you see someone create something on TV or on a video and you follow along same steps. And then your finished product and their finished product looked completely different, <laughs> right? Because they have like the, the experiential aspect of it. So in any event, um, should we share our amazing download and gift with these? You're muted. You're not muted. You're just not working. So you want me to, you want me to share it with them? Okay. You'll, you'll put the link in there. Okay. All right. So I'll give you a little bit of background and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what we came up with. And my hope, my hope is that, um, it lands for you in a way that supports you, uh, and, and provides you with the support and the opportunity to receive support in a way that maybe you've not had that before. Um, you know, something that became very clear to us uh, while sitting in the jungle and, and working with, with this beautiful medicine is people are really in it and like people are really, really struggling. Uh, people are really struggling emotionally. People are really struggling mentally. People are really struggling financially. Uh, Guy and I are in this place where, you know, we experience all those struggles as well. And we literally sat and we're like brainstorming and feeling into, you know, how can we give back in a way, you know, what can we do to offer uh, incredible levels of support to someone uh, that's in that state. And we, we just molded over, you know, like we literally sat there and felt the collective pain and the struggle and all this stuff. And, Anyway, we came back, we sat with it. Um, and like I said, just before this call, we had this conversation. And um, so we have an Awareness Effect Academy here. Uh, there's three levels to the Awareness Effect Academy, level one, level two, and level three. And we know that there's many, many of you uh, that are either here live or going to watch this on replay that have been kind of sitting on the sidelines, you know, like watching these videos and kind of trying to dip your toe in different things, uh, whether it's the MMI program or primary abundance or whatever it is. Right. Um, and like I said, in this conversation, the thing that makes the biggest difference is on the court coaching and live support. If you don't have that in your life, like as good as a program is going to be, it's not going to give you what it is that you want. And I, and I mean that wholeheartedly, like, our team, when they get on a call with someone who's bought, you know, our program for $49, I'm like, ask them what they really want. And if this program isn't going to give them the results that they want, then give them their money back. Just tell them like, this is not the program for you. Because sitting in your own, in the comfort of your own home without getting reflection from a coach, without being able to be in a group setting, without being able to get your custom feedback, like... It just doesn't work. It's good. It's great for information. It's great for insights. It's great for, for knowledge, but it's not, it's not the thing that shifts. So anyway, we've been, um, our level one program has been offered at $3,000. And what that includes is, is, um, weekly coaching. There's a weekly group coaching that you can attend forever. If you, if you so choose, um, at that price, um, it comes with, uh, seven modules that guy and I have recorded, uh, that you get to go through so that as you're going through it, you get to keep jumping back into those uh, practices. And then again, showing up to these calls and wherever you are in life, actually getting like feedback and coaching for where you're at in life. Um, and it also comes with a live event ticket. So you get to attend one of our two day live events for free. I mean, for free included in that, uh, bundle. Uh, with Guy and I, whether you can make, you know, the next upcoming one or you have to delay to the next one, it, it doesn't matter. You have access to it for free. Um, and also, uh, we offer the primary abundance as a uh, bonus to this as well. So we sat here and we're like, okay, what could we do? 
And what we're going to do is, and what we're going to try at least till the end of the year uh, as, a, as a way to give back to you all is we're not going to charge you 3000 or even 2000 or even 1000, which is kind of where we want it to be. We're like, all right, let's do a thousand. And then we just sat there and we're like, all right, what would, what would feel so fucking valuable to someone that like, it would be a no brainer for them to be like, okay, I'll, I'll take a year long, you know, years worth of coaching and, and the modules and plugging into the community and coming into the live event. And the number that came to both of us was $497. I know. I know. I, even as I say it, I'm like, we really? Yeah. $497. So if you've sat on the sidelines collecting information and you want to jump in and actually start moving the needle and getting on the court coaching weekly, plus coming to the live event, plus having Premier Abundance, plus having access to all the modules, you can do that now. Guy just dropped the link in there. $400. And $97. Again, I don't know how long we're going to keep this up. I don't know how long we're going to keep this open. I have no idea. It's just something that came through right now with everything that's happening in the world. So I don't even know what the percentage of this is, but it's $2,500 off of what the normal investment price is. Uh, and, and you're right. Uh, Andrea is just pointing out it's not sick. It's not four calls a month. You actually get six coaching sessions uh, a month. So I don't, I don't know. Let me, let me do that quick math. Six times 12. That's 72 sessions that you have access to um, per, per month. That's $6 and 90 cents a session that you guys get. $6.90 for coaching, live coaching. You know, I, I can't imagine that someone can't afford that. Uh, but that's that's what we want to do. So we're going to see if this hopefully supports those that have kind of been sitting on the periphery with money issues and this and that. You know, hopefully everyone can afford 497 bucks or, you know, $6.90 a week or whatever it comes out to. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what we wanted to offer you. That was the crazy, uh, crazy, crazy thing that popped through. It might be the worst idea we've ever had. <laughs> it might be the best idea we've ever had. Uh, but we really like, we trust this work and the medicine so much. And it was a very clear resonant piece of like, do something. And so yeah, I, again, act, act fast. We might change our mind next week and be like, this is the stupidest thing we've ever done. Uh, but for now, that link will get you that opportunity. And then you can jump in and get the, you know, live training, which is really what will set your life apart. There's not a single person that has gone through our level one program that hasn't come back and told us that it was one of the most profoundly life changing experiences right? So it's worth more than $3,000. Trust me. And people that have done it and paid that price will tell you flat out, like still one of the best investments. So get off your ass, take action, plug in and just start doing the real work. That's our crazy offer to you all. So while, while it's out there, make sure you grab it. Um, Bro, that's the link up there. It's go.satoriprime.com forward slash level one promo is the link just in case, you know, they're not seeing this on the, um, on the page again, go.satoriprime.com forward slash level one, the number one promo. Hope that helps. Hope to see you guys in that program. Uh, Guy and I also jump out there and do trainings for you guys once a month out there uh, once a month, once every six weeks, something like that. So you'll, you'll see us in there as well. And uh, yeah, don't delay, don't delay, get started. We love you guys and hope this was valuable and insightful and 
Now it's a matter of you taking action. Thank you, dear one, for choosing to share a bit of your day with us. We value you greatly. And as a way to give back and help you to deepen these practices, we want to invite you to join our incredible community on Facebook. You can do so easily by going to joinoldsouls.com and ask for an invite. This is our private community where old souls and seekers are able to grow and share their journey with others. We hold exclusive weekly live streams, we answer your personal questions, and offer valuable insights that we won't be able to share here on the podcast. So again, just head to joinoldsouls.com and grab your invite today. And as always, if you enjoy this podcast, please head to iTunes and leave us a review. It's the only way other people can find this show. So if it's making a difference in your life, please share the love. Until we meet again, have an amazing week, dear one.